So let's do an example problem. The, um, the example I've given you so far has been dissolution equilibria, but this works just as well for uh, chemical reactions as opposed to just uh, physical equilibria. So let's take this one. We've used it in several of our examples before. The equilibrium that hydrogen gas and iodine gas form with hydrogen iodide. Um, we're told that the Kq for this reaction at 80 degrees, it doesn't really matter what the temperature is as long as it's not changing. Remember that the only thing that can change the equilibrium constant for a given reaction is temperature. So the Kq at this temperature is 45.9. Uh, and we're told that in a 3 litre flask, we have 3.2 moles of hydrogen, 0.6 moles of iodine, and 2.1 moles of hydrogen iodide gas. They're put into that flask, and we have to predict which way the reaction is going to have to shift to reach equilibrium. So uh, the first thing I would do would be to write the equilibrium expression. That's always a good place to start. So Kq, products over reactants. Our product is hydrogen iodide. And it has a stoichiometric coefficient of 2, so I'm raising it to the power of 2. Our reactants are hydrogen and iodine. So they go on the bottom. Okay, so there's our equilibrium expression. The second thing I would do is to work out the concentrations of each of the species. I've given you moles and the volume of the flask, but not the actual concentrations. So uh, we've got hydrogen, concentration of hydrogen equals moles over volume, so 3.2 moles over a volume of 3 litres, uh, which gives you a concentration of about 1.1 moles per litre. Um, our iodine is 0.6 over 3, so that's 0.2 moles per litre, and our hydrogen iodide is 2.1 3, which is 0.7 moles per litre. Okay, to work out which way the reaction is going to shift, we have to evaluate Q so that we can compare it to KEQ. So we evaluate Q by simply sticking these values into the equilibrium expression and seeing how it turns out. So our Q is going to be concentration of hydrogen iodide squared, so that's uh, 0.7 squared. over the concentration of hydrogen times the concentration of iodine. So that's 1.1 times 0.2. And if you evaluate that, you get a value of Q of 2.2. Okay, so clearly in this case, our Q being 2.2 is less than our KEQ, which was 45.9. Now, let's have a look at the equilibrium expression. If Q is less than KEQ, okay, if the values that I put in are less than KEQ, it means that the bottom of this fraction, either the top of this fraction is too small or the bottom of this fraction is too big. Either way, it kind of means the same thing. If the top of the fraction is too small, it means there's not enough products. And if the bottom of this fraction is too big, it means there's too many reactants. Either way, what the reaction has to do to regain equilibrium is turn some of the reactants, some of the bottom of the fraction, into some products, which is the top of the fraction. That will make the overall value of this fraction bigger and it will eventually get to KEQ. So Q is less than KEQ. This means Either way, the way that this is solved is by the equilibrium shifting to the right to use up some reactants and produce some more products. Um, 
If we had, uh, just for argument's sake, if we had found the opposite situation, that Q was bigger than KQ, that would mean that the fraction was top heavy, that there were too many products or not enough reactants. And in that case, Q being bigger than KEQ, the way that that would be solved would be to use up some product and turn it back into reactant. So the reverse reaction would be favoured. And that would be called the equilibrium shifting to the left.